Well, there's this conventional wisdom out there that stocks become less volatile as the investment horizon increases. Okay, so for example, suppose I'm investing in the stock market for one year and you are investing for 30 years. Okay? Well, this conventional wisdom out there says that you, the long horizon investor, face less volatility than I do on a per period basis. In other words, the conventional wisdom says that stocks appear less volatile to a long horizon investor than to a short horizon investor. And this wisdom has been used to justify heavy stock allocations for long horizon investors. The idea is if, you're, if you have a long time to invest, if you have a long investment horizon, you should be heavily invested in stocks. So in this paper, we, we challenge this conventional wisdom. The conventional wisdom is based on historical estimates of volatility. In other words, if we look back at the past 200 years of data and calculate the, the volatilities of stocks, how much stocks have fluctuated around the, around the average, kind of around the trend, if we do that, uh, these historical volatilities will tell us that stocks are less volatile in the long run. Okay? However, investors making investment decisions today have to look into the future. Okay? And the future is famously different from the past. So the forward-looking measures of volatility, which we calculate, are the relevant measures to an investor. And these forward-looking measures of volatility are not the same as the historical measures of volatility. Okay? In, in fact, we show that this forward-looking measure of volatility that an investor should care about has two components, one of which is the historical volatility, and the other is a component that reflects uncertainty about the future, okay? in particular uncertainty about the parameters describing how stock returns move over time. There are two effects uh, going on, two basic effects. Uh, first, there's the mean reversion effect. Okay. The idea behind mean reversion is that bull markets and bear markets roughly cancel out. So after stocks go up for a few years, they tend to go down and, and vice versa. And it's this idea of mean reversion that generates lower stock volatility at long investment horizons. That's what the conventional wisdom is based on, mean reversion. We show that mean reversion is indeed a strong force. However, it's not the only force. And the, uh, the other force that we emphasize is, is uncertainty. In particular, uncertainty about the average return. Uh, uh, we, we, we don't know what the average return in the stock market is going to be. Okay? And that uncertainty turns out to compound over time. That uncertainty matters a lot more to a long horizon investor than to a short horizon investor. And this, the second effect of uncertainty turns out to be stronger than the first effect of, of mean reversion. Historical volatility is calculated by taking fluctuations around the historical average return. And we know what the historical average return has been. So the historical average return in the stock market, in real terms, has been about 7% per year. We know that. It's a fact. But if we look into the future, as investors should, we don't know what the average real stock market return is going to be. Maybe it'll be 7%, maybe it'll be 3%, or maybe it'll be 12%. So if you want to calculate how stocks fluctuate around the, the unknown mean, it turns out, well, the volatility is going to be larger. You're calculating fluctuations around an unknown quantity. So first of all, volatility will be larger. And moreover, it's going to grow over time. If you take our results at face value, they suggest that long horizon investors who up to this point have been investing based on the conventional wisdom should now reduce their stock allocation somewhat. Okay. Um, so stocks should become a somewhat, somewhat smaller part of, of our long horizon investment portfolios. Over the past few decades, uh, more and more people uh, have been relying on their 401ks or 403bs for their retirement. Um, people do make long-run investment decisions uh, on a monthly basis. Every month we decide how much to allocate to our retirement accounts and in particular um, and also how much to allocate to stocks, how much to allocate to bonds, active funds, passive funds. So I think even it, it, the average person out there needs to understand the riskiness of, of the various investment vehicles that are available and um, 
and this conventional wisdom and thousands of financial advisors would advise you to to put more and more in stocks um, as your investment horizon increases. So the advice out there is if you're 25 years old and you're beginning to save for retirement, all of your money should go into stocks. And part of the reason is, is that stocks become less volatile as the investment horizon increases, at least so the conventional wisdom says. So by, by challenging this, this idea, we are also challenging the idea that younger investors should be heavily invested in stocks. What we're saying is that stocks actually become more risky, more volatile as the investment horizon increases. So if you're a young person, you know, you need to reconsider uh, how much of your wealth should be invested in stocks.